You are listening to Water Online Radio. Welcome back to our exclusive coverage from WEFTEC, the water quality event. This edition of Water Online Radio, covering WEFTEC since 2011, is broadcasted live from New Orleans, Louisiana, and is brought to you by WaterOnline.com, enabling water and wastewater professionals to make informed decisions. Let's get on with the show. Here are your hosts, Todd Schnick and Todd Youngblood. All right. Good morning and welcome back to our day three coverage from WEFTEC Live in New Orleans. Todd, I always enjoy our conversation with our next guest. We always learn something valuable. It's like an old friend and Mr. Dependable coming up with something new and different and interesting every year. I agree. We wouldn't be WEFTEC without this guy. Say hello to our guest. His name is Jim Porteous. He's the vice president and general manager with Ovivo. Jim, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Todd and Todd for that nice introduction. It's good to see you again, man. Always Likewise. Good, always good to see you. Do me a favor. Remind the audience about you and your background and then give us the 10,000-foot view of Ovivo. What do you do? How do you serve your market? Sure. Well, I've been in this business for a lot of years. Came out to the U.S. in 85, and from there I've been in the equipment business pretty much all that time. Ovivo bought EnviroQuip, which was our company, mm-hmm. uh, eight years ago, and since then I've been responsible for the municipal business in North America. Vivo has three main divisions. One is uh, energy, the other one is uh, ultra-pure water, and, of course, the municipal business in the U.S., which is what we're here this week mm-hmm. for. About. Jim, whenever I hear anybody say I've been in this industry a lot of years as opposed to stating a specific number, I know that's a guy I want to talk about, some, <laughs> some perspective on change, right. I and mean, you've seen a lot over the years. And more recently, I mean, let's not go back to the beginning of the career, but just sure. the last couple of years, what's new, what's different, what's exciting? Well, I think for me, I, funnily enough, one of, our, one of our legacies companies, Jones and Atwood, had one of the early patents in this industry, an activated sludge, 100 years ago. And uh, I haven't been around quite that long, but sometimes I feel I have. Uh, but, we, but what we're seeing, I think that in the next 20 years, we'll see more change than we saw in the last 100. I believe that. I believe that. And I'm really excited about that. So our goal at Ovivo is to be in the forefront of that change. So what we're looking at really is a three-pronged approach. Internal innovation, licensing new product, and acquisition. So all those three are the way we see ourselves growing as we go forward here in the future. Todd and I have been broadcasting water online radio for about four years now, and I've been covering this event for five years. And so recovering resources from wastewater, frankly, wasn't something we talked about a lot when we first started broadcasting from here. And that's only five years ago. That, to me, is one of the most exciting developments in this industry. I'm trusting you believe that we can recover resources from wastewater. Absolutely. I mean, for me, for too long, we've been talking about wastewater. We need to be told, I mean, we have valuable resources here. We have carbon, we have nitrogen, we have phosphorus, and we have the water itself. So if we can recover all of those, we can really take what has been a, historically a big burden on cities to being a blessing. In fact, we talked to our um, customers recently. We asked them, okay, what are the main issues for you going forward? And that was one of the issues. How can we recover more resource from wastewater? If you look at the water in Texas right now, we're in a situation where they have no option but to actually reuse water. Almost 50% of the water in some towns is is actually wastewater being reused. But again, it's perception. We've got to stop people thinking about it as wastewater. It's actually better quality than a lot of the drinking water. In fact, better quality than this bottle of water I'm drinking right now. We can treat to any level. It's just a matter of doing it. So that's one. Carbon is another one. We've always produced biogas. But we believe we can actually utilize it more effectively going forward and create more value out of that carbon. Nutrient recovery, phosphorus recovery is something that's very critical because there's a limited supply of phosphorus in the world. And our goal is to recover as much of the phosphorus as possible. And that's technology we'd probably introduce here in about nine months' time. So we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, it was really interesting, Todd, that just hit me now. Just the whole name of the industry, wastewater treatment, based exactly. on what, what Jim is saying. It's the we wrong name. It's absolutely. The, it's absolutely, absolutely the wrong name. I mean, yeah. that, that flipped the light bulb there. And another piece of that, as, as I listen to you talk and reflecting back on the three-pronged approach that you talked about, you're going to develop internally, you're going to license, right. and you're going to acquire. So it strikes me as a recognition of there's so much opportunity, absolutely. so much to know, so much knowledge that the partnering thing is really it, important. It is because there's a lot more money going to research right now. So what we're going to have to do is take some of that primary research and convert it into product. And that's really what we're working with the universities to do that. So our goal here is to bring new technology to the market as rapidly as we can. Historically, we've looked at, can we bring a product every two years? I'm saying we've got to accelerate that. We've got to do better because there's real opportunity to change the industry and, and we want to do that as a vivo. 
All right. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Water Online Radio live from WebTech, and we're talking with our old friend Jim Portis of Ovivo. The perception is a big issue here because we've just been talking about calling right. it wastewater, I think, is part of the problem. Obviously, the folks in this building at, as we speak here at WefTech get this, understand it. And I think the rising tide lifts all boats mentality of this industry. We right. all are trying to move in that direction, but right. it's the outsiders. It's the exactly. general public. What do we, what does the industry have to do to begin to change that perception? Well, interestingly enough, in Texas, we've had no choice. Mm. And <laughs> we've seen where big springs are going I hate to use this expression, but toilet to tap. That's not very uh, exciting. You know, when you hear that, immediately your reaction is, I'm not going to drink that stuff anyway, right? <laughs> so that's where it starts. But actually, El Paso and Wichita Falls are also moving towards big reuse. And they have done a fantastic job of education. In fact, in El Paso, they have 96% acceptance for reuse water. I mean, that's incredible when you think about it. Yeah, it is. So they've yeah. broken that barrier. So we just have to learn these lessons from, from some of these people who are doing a great job. How they do that? I mean, was it anything special? Or Education it... and the people trusting that their local government is doing the right thing in terms of using the right treatment processes. And it's really education, constant education. I mean, the water is better. Our pure water group produces water that you couldn't drink. It's so pure. Because if you <laughs> did, it would leach, leach all of the, your insides out. So, I mean, the reality is we can produce any quality water you want, but people still think of it as wastewater being treated. It's all water. There's only one water cycle. It's been around forever. Yeah, that's true. Jim, are you, uh, are you guys exhibiting here? Yes, we are. So walk us through what you're principally showcasing here at WefTech. Well, actually, we have, uh, we have, of course, our full range of products, clarifiers, MBR, carousel, uh, ditch equipment. We have screens, and we have a, a brand new dual flow screen on the show, which is getting a lot of attention. Mm. You can have different mesh sizes, so like six millimeter down to two millimeter, all on the same screen. And what that's doing is it allowing us to be really good screening before, say, an MBR. And I think we have other applications as well, like cleaning up uh, RAS and that kind of stuff. So that's really one of the things that's caught a lot of attention this year. I think we got a winner there. Yeah, that's exciting. And that was developed internally. That was wow. our own guys putting their heads together. So that's exciting. Very exciting. Anything unexpected that the folks coming through the booth are interested in asking about, or is it pretty much what you expected to hear here? I think... Um, I, what I find this year that there isn't as much traffic, but people are much more, they're more focused on what they want, what solutions. <laughs> and again, um, you know, we're seeing things like, I suppose really if you look at the thing that's creating the, the most interest right now, it would be, again, how can we, this whole resource recovery topic is becoming more and more of interest to people. And uh, other than that, it's, uh, there's a lot of work being done, a lot of plants are getting old, so we're going to have to replace stuff. And of course, we have, because of the DAR, Oliver legacy and the uh, IMCO legacy and the Aurora Group legacy, right. we have equipment in almost every plant in the US. So we have a lot of people coming in, how can I replace my clarifier? How can I replace my drive? And again, that's, that's something that has to be done. The, the infrastructure, we haven't been spending money on infrastructure for a long time. So we're making sure they can keep going. All right. Jim, we certainly see you and Ovivo as leaders in the industry, but I still suspect that when Jim Porteous walks around WefTech, you observe and learn some things. Uh, when you walk out of here today, what, what will be your key takeaways? There are a lot of interesting peripheral technologies on the edges that we've got to take a look at. Uh, we've got to find a way to maybe help some of those guys uh, or join with them. And, and of course, we're, we're looking at companies that uh, may want to join the Ovivo group. So that's something that we are very interested in right now because we have some money to spend. Well, Todd and I are available. I, I so was just going to say good. that. I, I want to join the Ovivo group. <laughs> Ovivo, <laughs> Radio <you> sounds, <laughs> Ovivo Radio sounds really, Absolutely. really good. So, all right. Well, Jim, I hate to say it, but we are out of time. Uh, before we let you go, how can people get in touch with you and learn more about Ovivo? The best thing to do is uh, email us at uh, ovivowater.com, and uh, we'll be back to them straight away. All right. Jim Porteous, the Vice President and General Manager with Ovivo. As always, sir, good to see you. Thank you, guys. Todd and Todd. Always Much a pleasure. Appreciated. Always, always a pleasure. pleasure. All right. Well, that wraps this episode. On behalf of our guest, your host, Todd and Todd, and all of us at Water Online Radio, our WebTech coverage will be right back. <laughs>